As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from a research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. All right, if you're new here, the way this works is dead simple. I've got five topics. We're gonna go rapid fire in order and then reverse order. Everyone gets 30 seconds each. Uh, I may cut you off at 25, I don't know, 30 seconds each to comment on the story after I introduce it. Uh, let's start with the first story here. You guys are gonna love that I'm starting with this one. And the headline here is Blizzard is pulling interest in NFTs and play to earn games. Um, so, a so there was this report that Blizzard had done a poll. In fact, supposedly had done it with YouGov, I think was the, the original story around interest in NFTs and play to earn games. And Mike uh, Ybarra, who is, I want to say the COO, um, COO an Activision Blizzard, uh, <laughs> responded. And if you see, you're looking at the screen, you can see it responded with no one is doing NFTs, which pretty uh pretty clear uh that they don't want anything to do with it or at least officially that's the line but shot down any rumors that they were looking at nfts or play to earn games jeff let's start with you your 30 seconds starts now i love that they were using yougov i think that's smart because they're they're really good at acquiring and analyzing data so good job on them for picking the right data provider I, I don't understand why they had to do a poll on this. It feels like when you're managing via spreadsheet and, and opinion poll, you're probably doing something wrong in a creative environment. And then I also don't like that this Mike Yabara just shut it down and said, hey, we're not doing NFTs. Like NFTs are going to have a place in gaming and just come out and say, hey, we're not doing it. I know he thinks he's catering to the gamer audience. But to me, it actually is just closed minded and kind of like emblematic of how not innovative Blizzard actually is. Lindsay, I love that take, by the way. Oh, I, I, I actually agree with Jeff uh, quite a bit <laughs> on this, but I will say, I mean, I think that this is a way, I mean, I, I don't think that they're not looking at play to earn in NFTs. I think that they're doing whatever they need to do internally and looking at these things and deciding on them. They're too big of a company. They have too much of a foot in gaming to not be doing that. However, I also think that they're avoiding the public backlash, which is the thing they really need to do right now by publicly saying, we're not looking at NFTs. Um, so I think that this is a way of playing both sides. And I 100% don't believe him. But I also believe that they want to put their best foot forward in terms of making people happy. And right now that's saying no NFT. Jimmy. T tons of people are doing NFTs, just not necessarily gaming developers. I think it's going to be a massive industry and uh, we've seen some awesome numbers and some awesome ways that uh, gamers are using NFTs, particularly Dr. Disrespect. And I know Paul doesn't like that anecdote, but it was very successful for his FPS. Um, yeah, I mean, Blizzard kind of just needs to stay quiet right now and and kind of wait for the acquisition, wait for another hit title. I, I This is just a non-story to me. Like, do the game or don't do the game or announce something cool. But to pull interest in something, I it, there, there's nothing here that excites me one way or the other. Um, <laughs> this one. So uh, let me just correct myself. Mike Yabar is Blizzard's president. And... What I don't understand is why take such a hard stance on something? Because the worst case scenario here, and and I think all of you sort of alluded to this, is if at some point they do decide to do them, you know this tweet's going to get dug up and, and they're just going to look bad again and they're going to look silly. Like, why take such a hard public stance? If this rumor comes out, let it come out, right? It's not going to change the way people feel about Activision Blizzard right now because, frankly, that feeling is sort of shot to hell anyway so i don't know why you would take this firm stance 
no gamers are in love with Mike Yabara because he said this now, right? This is, it's not making, it's not getting him any cool points with gamers. Let me just read these comments. Adam says, there's no chance Activision is not doing NFTs yet. Adam, I agree with you. And especially Blizzard, Hearthstone. Wow. Like these are the most right places for it. Uh, maybe not now, but they will be exactly. That's why uh, he shouldn't be saying this. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's move on. Let's talk about Amazon. This headline here, Amazon launches its first Amazon Kids Plus original mobile game. So for those of you who don't know, Kids Plus is like a, I don't know if it's like a subscription service, but basically you, it's a subscription you get with like an Amazon tablet that's designed for kids. So it's designed to be, you know, drop proof and waterproof and stuff like that. Now they're producing their first mobile games for this Amazon Plus kids subscription, which used to be movies and TV shows and books and other content that you could get now games. Um, Jeff, uh, sorry, we started with Jeff last time. Jimmy, start with you. Uh, what do you think of Amazon plus kids or kids plus making mobile games? It makes sense to me. I think a lot of parents or I mean, everyone has an Amazon subscription. I think we had talked about Amazon adding some type of upcharge to your prime subscription which would come with a game a game library um and getting it to your kids makes a lot of sense as well because if the parent has an amazon subscription and you have free access to these games you don't have to go paying for game pass or other things that are unique and on their own so adding it where the parents already are as as something to service the kids makes a lot of sense um and they got to ride the wave that they've been on Lindsay. Yeah, I don't know that this is like a huge interesting story to me. It's kind of just a thing that Amazon is doing that makes, again, makes sense to me. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have that much to add to Jimmy's point. Everyone has an Amazon account. A lot of people have kids. Seems natural that Amazon would make stuff for kids digitally and IRL. <laughs> Are you surprised that they're ad free? Um, <laughs> In the context of the, should they, should we should they be putting ads? I don't know. Oh, I need like way more time to think about that. Okay, question. Well, this is not a lightning round. Out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. I'll add to the last piece. I don't, I think yeah. they, I don't think it should have ads in it because I don't think, you know, the age that they're targeting is really the decision maker. And they're also not really old enough to be like sort of pushing the decision maker. So I just think it's more of a, an annoyance to have the ads in there than, than it's really doing any good. Um, but yeah, no, I think this is, this is interesting. I mean, Amazon continuing to broaden their, approach in gaming um, and approach new demographics makes sense. Have you guys uh, ever seen, they, have you guys ever seen kids playing like any mobile games, like on a tablet like this? I'm convinced that the quality or content of the game actually makes no difference. Like you could, you could put the absolute biggest garbage on the screen and the kid's still going to play it. Right. If it, if it has cool colors and it's somewhat you know repetitive and easy, easy to pick up gameplay, Kids are going to play it. I don't know why Amazon would be dedicating development resources to this. Feels feels a bit misplaced. Now, I don't know if it's the same people who developed Do Re Mi Musical Adventure who, you know, also could be working on making New World better. But um, like I just I, there's a bigger prize here. And I don't think it's, you know, the kids with the seventy dollar Amazon tablets. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, let me just catch up on some of these comments. Angie says Activision said they wouldn't do mobile either until they announced a $6 billion acquisition of King. Great point. It's a great point. And we know they're going to do something here. Like it's just that tweet is not going to age well at all. Um, Tom says ads aimed at kids. That is a line they won't cross. I can almost guarantee the slippery slope ends with that line being crossed. I, does anyone think that line never gets crossed? Cause I, I would, I would not bet on that. It's that already line crossed. It's yeah. like already happened. That, that, that is the prime like target for ads. Like just look at Saturday morning cartoons. I mean, it's literally 80% ads. Um, all right, guys, let's, uh, let me get our next story queued up here. You guys are going to really like this one. These are last, uh, last few stories here. Uh, the headline here is, oops, Cyberpunk 2077 expansion coming in 2023. So the, the subheadline, the good news is that it's still coming. The bad news is not for a while yet. So uh, we know Cyberpunk went off the rails. That's what the article says here. 
But now they've said, and this is a, I'll read the quote from CD Projekt joint CEO. He says, we're fully committed to the cyberpunk franchise and intend to develop it further. Is this, uh, what, what is the, is the sunk cost fallacy, Jeff? Like, is this what's at work here? What, what, why would they want to commit to an expansion? It's tough. I mean, they, uh, let's say, to the, I mean, they, they don't really have a choice, right? In the sense that they need to, they need this franchise because otherwise without it, they're basically a one franchise company, which means, you, you know, you need to be sold effectively. Um, so they need to keep digging on Cyberpunk. And it did sell, I think I saw 18 million units. So there is a player base there that maybe you can re-engage with some DLC content and whatnot. Um, but yeah, no, I, 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 I do agree with your point to some extent where maybe these resources would be better spent on just like a whole new version of the game or, or I don't even know what they've done with the online mode if they've just completely scrapped that. But yeah, it's... Uh... Lindsay? I saw this and it just like, I don't know if it, it hurt my heart in a way that I can't describe because (laughs) I just want for CDPR to just be successful and make people happy and they just can't get it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Like, I just, I, I think it's fairly easy to dunk on this, but I do want to say like, I, I am so sad for all the people that are there and working hard and believe in this game and are just, just cannot for what, ever reason get all the pieces together so this is my uh, brief eulogy or <laughs> message of support to those folks. prayer yeah prayer thank you <laughs> jimmy uh does this come out in 2023 i mean <laughs> do, do they have a working game in 2023 i, I would challenge you. i i don't know i it's besides the point honestly the, the question is when was the last expansion that you can remember that saved a franchise and I've been trying to think of one and I can't. And I think their best bet would have been to put that money into developing a different game, uh, either a third franchise or cyberpunk, I don't know, 3158, you know, where all the kinks are worked out. So <laughs> like Lindsay said, bless them for trying, but it's kind of a lost cause. Um, I love it. I, I this, yeah, <laughs> this just feels, um, so off for me. I, I don't know why they would do this. It, I, I think Jeff hit the nail on the head in terms of, well, they don't want to be a one franchise company, but putting resources into cyberpunk, like classic, I think mismanagement of resources that, that this would have been better off in new IP. Uh, Adam says, I feel like they're beating a dead horse at this point. Exactly. There's no, there's, this is not going to the guaranteed if they sold 18 million units, there's not 18 million players at the moment. If they, if they have a, uh, tens of thousands, I would be surprised. 